Today we're going to start our series on building a VR birthday card for my niece Lauren. Now everything we're going to do is in the web browser. It's called WebVR. It's a standard API for creating VR content in the browser. So the first thing we need to do is just create a web page. I'm using WebStorm, but you could use any editor you want. I'm going to create a new directory called birthday card. And inside this, as all web pages do, start with an index.html file. To get started with WebVR, there's a bunch of setup we need that's pretty much the same every time. So we have a boilerplate here. And we're just going to copy the whole boilerplate into our web page and make sure that everything is in the right place. I'm going to switch over to Firefox and let's see if it loads, which it probably won't. There's probably some dependencies that we need. So I just opened up the Firefox debugger. Here's the console. We can see, oh, there's a bunch of files not loading. The paths are probably wrong. So I'll just fix the paths to where I stored that boilerplate. Okay, now I fixed the imports. Everything has loaded. And you can see it says my application name. Click to start. I don't have a VR headset attached, so it says VR not found. And we can see this cube turning around. Oh, but the image is missing. So let's fix the image. OK, now we have our cube with a picture of a cat on the side. And we can see we have input events working. So whenever I mouse in, it turns to green. And if I click, it turns to red. And we have a nice debug system here. It'll tell me the current frames per second, how many calls and triangles I have. So that is just using the boilerplate by default. Let's walk through it really quick. Mostly this stuff you won't need to change. It's loading all the, the requirements. We're using 3JS. 3JS is one of the most popular libraries for doing 3D on the web. The GLTF loader will let us load up GLTF files, which is like JPEG for 3D, so all of our 3D models. When we do text later, we're going to need the true type font loader and its support. Then boilerplate WebVR. This is what actually lets us jump into WebVR. And then VR stats is this little thing right here that shows us the frames per second triangles. Then there's some CSS. You can change this however you want. Standard CSS. This is the overlay that's in HTML. Like we saw right there at the beginning. Now we get into the code. It imports the pointer and VR stats. There's a few utility functions and the important stuff. A function called init content. And this is where I actually create the scene. So it sets the background. We can see the background is set to a medium gray. If I was to go back and change this, so let's say really blindingly red that I wouldn't want in real life. Hit reload. And now we can see the entire background has changed to red. This is what loads up the cat. Then we create a box. Now in 3JS and really pretty much any 3D graphics, we have this concept of an object is composed of two things. There is the geometry, the actual shape, and then the material, which is the color, the texture, how light bounces off of it. So we call this a mesh. It's going to have a box geometry, which is a one by one by one cube. In 3D, we do everything in meters, so this would be a one meter cube. Then the mesh Lambert material. Um, Lambert is a kind of diffuse lighting. Later on, we'll look at other types of materials. I set the color to white and gave its map as this texture object, which is the JPEG that I made. Then I need to set the cube position to negative 5. By default, the camera is at 0, 0, 0. So 0 in the x direction, which goes this way. 0 in the y direction, goes up and down. 0 in the z direction, which goes in and out of the screen. And it's a little counterintuitive, but in 3D graphics, usually z is negative into the screen. So if I want something to be in front of me, I would give it a negative in in this case, I'm using a position of negative 5. By default, the camera is at uh, 1.5 approximately meters, unless I have a headset attached, in which case it will show me the real uh, position of the head. So um, I'm going to position the cube at roughly where the camera would be, which is 1.5 meters. Then I want it to receive user input, so I set its user data to be clickable, add it to my scene. We also have one light here, which is added to my scene. Then we added the VR stats. Then the pointer object. Now, the pointer object is not part of WebVR itself. This came with the, the template. It sort of unifies mouse touch and VR controllers into one set of inputs. 
Um, you don't have to use this, but it makes working with common inputs a lot easier. So in this case, I said only things which are have user data clickable are available to be clicked on. Then I set up a couple of event handlers. One is clicking, so on cube. When it gets a click event, I'm going to print click the cube and set the color of the material to red. When the pointer enters the cube, then we set the color to green. And when the pointer exits the cube, we set the color back to white. And that's it. That sets up everything you saw in my scene. There's one other important function, which is render. Now, init content is called once when the whole web page starts up. Render is called on every single frame. So ideally 60 or more times every second. And the render function, if there's a pointer, will update the pointer. If there's stats, it'll update the stats. If the cube object exists, it's going to update the rotation by a tiny fraction of an angle. And so that is what makes the cube rotate around. And then it calls renderer.render. .render, and that's what actually draws everything to the screen. So this function will be called 60 times every second. Below that is the actual setup for all of the underlying 3JS and web VR stuff. Um, generally, I can leave this how I want. It's there if I want to modify it, but I almost never need to. So that is what gives us our VR web page. And if I'm on a VR device, then I can hit this button and actually go into an immersive mode. I always start with getting something on the screen so that I know that everything is working. Even though I'm going to take the cube and the cat out very quickly, I want to make sure that everything is in place first and then start customizing. So I started with a boilerplate. This handles the standard setup of 3D graphics and jumping into WebVR. It has two functions. One is render, which is called every second just to draw stuff. And then init content. That's called once at the beginning. What it will do is set the background of my entire scene add some geometry and material to create the cube object, turn on some debugging, put a load up an image and add it to the cube, and then a little bit of input handling so that I get the nice mouse over. So now that we have the web page set up, we need to get some real 3D objects, something a little more interesting than the cube. So in the next section, we're going to go get some really cool objects from a place called Sketchfab.